All right, well, uh, with only a slight delay, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure uh, for me to be able to welcome you to the third annual Aarhus Workshop on Recreational Fear. Uh, I'm hoping everything works as it should and that uh, the people who joined us via Zoom are also able to hear and see. Um, we have record numbers of attendance this year, uh, about 160 are here, uh, some of you physically and uh, some people online. Um, and like I said, it's the third time we're doing a recreational fear workshop. Um, and when I say we, I mean the, uh, the recreational fear lab, um, a research <laughs> center at this university put into the world to uh, try to understand what's going on when people derive pleasure from playing with fear. And these are some of our people at a recent uh, outreach event at the National Science Day uh, when we put together a booth where people could come and play horror video games while we measured uh, psychophysiological responses and they could get their morbid curiosity score and things like that. Uh, so we do a lot in terms of uh, public outreach and people were very interested in this um, display that we had made for the day. Uh, and I think that's one domain in which we've had some success. Uh, one of our success stories include uh, being featured on Good Morning America, <laughs> of all places, uh, last year. Uh, but even with this um, coverage, this media coverage of our work, there are so still people who have a hard time believing that we exist, uh, including Neil deGrasse Tyson, who did some <laughs> Uh, coverage of our work and he was like, Recreational Fear Lab, uh, is that a thing? <laughs> is, is Aarhus a thing? Is it real? Um, but still, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've made some progress in, in sharing our results on the psychology and physiology of uh, playing with fear with the world. And so the, f the, the center was established in 2020, three years ago. And the first uh, annual Aarhus workshop we held in uh, 2021, and it was virtual because of a respiratory disease which shall not be named. <laughs> uh, it was still a success, um, and we went bigger the following year, that's 2022, when we did a physical event. And we thought, how are we going to top ourselves? Because the first one was good. What do we do for the second one? So we looked to Scream, the franchise, uh, we look to Randy, uh, those of you who have seen Screen will remember Randy as a character who knows the rules of, of horror movies. And Randy says about sequels, the body count is always bigger. The death scenes are always much more elaborate with more blood and gore. So obviously we needed some blood and gore for the second <laughs> annual Aarhus workshop. And so what we did was we invited Mr. Piggy, who was a character <laughs> in Dystopia Haunted House, our collaborators, where we co uh, collect data every year. And so uh, this is a group photo that was taken just after we had gotten people together <laughs> and uh, Piggy came in with his chainsaw and, and scared people. Uh, so that was the second workshop. And so we thought, what do we do for the third one? Uh, we don't have any blood and gore. We have no people with chainsaws, but we consulted uh, Randy once again, who in Scream 3 talks about trilogies. And what he says is, in the third one, you've got a killer who's gonna be superhuman. Stabbing him won't work, uh, shooting him won't work. Basically, in the third one, you've got to cryogenically freeze his head, decapitate him, or blow him up. How does that translate to an academic gathering? <laughs> um, the best thing we could come up with was to get a keynote who's going to be super awesome. <laughs> so that's what we did. Uh, we got a keynote who is super awesome. Uh, that made us happy, but then, you know, Randy kept talking, and he said, in the third one, anyone, including the main <laughs> character, <laughs> can die. So we thought, uh, who's the main character here? Is it the keynote? In which case, I apologize. <laughs> uh, could be it's the organizer, in which case I derive some um, comfort from the fact that I'm not the only one. I have two co-organizers. Uh, Mark, who's sitting over here, and Jens, who's operating the camera at the moment. Uh, this picture, by the way, is one of my favorite uh, lab photos taken in Dystopia Haunted House from when Mark was a postdoc and I'm in the back as a PI looking <laughs> with uh, approval. There is something, there is some subtext here about precarious <laughs> academic uh, employment. 
Uh, but it's also striking that the amount of pain people are willing to go through to, to be in this lab. Um, and I want to talk about the people. I also wanted to say a little bit, bit about the research that we've been doing, the empirical research we've done for the past couple of years, but really it's about the people. But we did a study on um, fear regulation among haunted house visitors. We also did a really cool study on the personality profile of horror fans. Uh, we have done research on uh, how it seems that people who watch a lot of horror movies had better psychological resilience during the lockdown than people who stay away from horror movies. Uh, we did a study on the relationship between uh, fear and pleasure and found a sweet spot of fear, again in a haunted house study. We've done research on why people are sometimes afraid of things that don't exist, so, such as supernatural agents. We've done research on recreational fear in Danish daycare institutions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've done some work on the psychological benefits that different kinds of horror fans derive from engagement with frightening media. Uh, we have done research on the, vo the voice of evil. How does evil sound? Uh, and what are the psychological underpinnings of, for example, the voice of um, the demon Pazuzu in The Exorcist. We have done a computational analysis of the style of Stephen King just out. We have done a study of uh, jump scares and how increasing workload seems to increase jump scare intensity. We're planning a really cool study on whether recreational fear might have anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, we have some survey data uh, on the way on um, how uh, Danish youth engage with recreational fear. We have a new study out on creepiness and the uncanny. And we have some cool stuff coming out also on the social dynamics of uh, engaging with horror. So some fun things happening, but again, it's really about the people and the amount of pain people are willing to go through to work with this lab. Uh, for example, one of our brave uh, interns, Sophia, who's sitting right over there, volunteered to take part in a pilot that we're doing with the Danish Armed Forces. And I could tell you more about the pilot, but then I'd probably get shot. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just show you the picture. Uh, and this is Sophia playing a horror virtual reality game while she is inhaling carbon dioxide. Oh. Um, yeah, she did that. Uh, so we have the interns who are way too cool. We have our research assistants who help us year after year. For example, this um, stellar team who uh, collected data at a haunted house uh, project and collected more than a thousand responses. It amounts to about four-fifths of a Mr. Piggy, as you can see over <laughs> here. Those are the questionnaires con collected that year. Um, so really, we wouldn't be anything without the assistants and the uh, interns. But we also have the best collaborators. Uh, these are just some of our international collaborators from the UK who visited the lab last year. And they were also on a tour of the haunted house uh, where we collect data. And this is, these are serious British researchers just after Mark has jump scared them <laughs> in the darkness of the, uh, of the haunted house. So thanks also uh, to our external partners, uh, <laughs> mainly, uh, mainly Dystopia Entertainment. And this is, so we, when we do these haunted house projects, we put up um, surveillance cameras and sometimes we catch some really weird things, including, uh, including this uh, from last year. <laughs> Finally, I ought to say thanks to our uh, sponsors. We've been very lucky to receive generous support from uh, the Independent Research Fund Denmark and our friends at the Interacting Mind Center and also uh, the Innovation Fund Denmark. So today uh, we have a very cool program for you. Uh, once I'm done uh, talking, uh, Joe is going to take over. And then we'll have a lunch break. I thought we'd go to Stockland, which is right around the corner, but that's maybe that's not a place where you can get food, but we'll figure it out. Uh, you'll have to pay for your own lunch, I'm afraid, unless you're a presenter, in which case we will pay. Uh, and then we have uh, Neil to talk about horror film music. We have Asa, Asa or Dr. Death, as we like to call him in the lab, <laughs> our pathologist friend. I think he's okay with that. Yeah. Yes, exactly, <laughs> uh, to talk about teaching death. 
We have Lucy, who unfortunately caught a respiratory disease, which shall not be named, and so we'll be zooming in uh, to talk about um, using adaptive horror games to train uh, emotion regulation skills. Then we'll have a coffee break. We have Jenny, who is here from the UK, to talk about using horror films in therapy. And finally, we have Caitlin to talk about uh, different kinds of horror mu music, how they evoke different kinds of emotional responses.